Smith. The first speaker signed up this evening is Sharon Carlson. Yes, my name is Sharon Carlson. I live at 56 Market Street in Northampton. I am also the president of the Northampton Association of School Employees. I'm here this evening because I received a notice last night at 7 o'clock that you may be voting on implementing chapter of the general laws, chapter 32B, section 21 through 23. Um, I believe that in Northampton, because of the years of not having a lot of money, our insurance has been our only benefit. And with 32B, section 21 through 23, I believe that you circumvent the collective bargaining process. And I believe that for all my members. I would truly hope and has believed that over the years, the AIC, which is the Insurance Advisory Committee that we have in Northampton, has worked with the mayors, the previous mayor and uh, Mayor Nakowitz last year on changing plan design so to, really, uh, to bring down the insurance costs. I believe that going with 32B, section 21 through 23, that you will circumvent the collective bargaining process and reduce our ability to have any type of long-term benefits in this city. I believe through this, the, the years, the loyalty of the teachers, the ESPs, the custodians, the secretaries, and other administrators in the school department have shown their willingness to reduce funds. But attacking our insurance is not the way to go. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, uh, some of these. Okay, so the um, that completes our financial orders for this evening. Uh, we now have an order before you. Um, <laughs> oh, goodness. No, uh, no it's, it's not a financial order. It's a property order. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do the next item, which is a straight order. This is um, in City Council upon the recommendation of City Council President William H. White ordered that a special election be held in November, on November 6, 2012, and that the following question be placed on the ballot pursuant to and in accordance with Section 47, Chapter 277 of the Act of 2012. Shall an act entitled Quote, an act revising the charter for the city of Northampton be accepted. Moved to yes, approve. Okay. Second. So there's been a motion made and seconded uh, for second reading. Um, and as you'll note, we do have a bill number now because the bill has actually been adopted by the legislature and signed by the Just governor. So there's now an actual act of the legislature that we need to fill in. Yes. Is there any discussion or debate on this particular question? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that is adopted on second reading. Okay, um, for the next item, uh, so the next item before you uh, would be an order um, regarding the city electing to engage in a process to change health insurance benefits. I, though, before uh, moving into that uh, discussion, as the chair, I have to issue the following ruling that we, uh, this council lacks a quorum uh, due to conflicts related to the order before you. Um, but uh, in accordance with a ruling from the State Ethics Commission, um, that, that uh, lack of a quorum could be satisfied uh, by the invocation of the rule of necessity by those counselors who have conflicts. So in order to proceed on this particular item, and you were provided with a copy of mm -hmm. the State Ethics Commission ruling, uh, we'll need to have those members who do have a conflict to identify the conflict and um, invoke the rule of necessity. Um, the rules, rule of necessity, just for those at home, states that when you have a decision that can only be made by a body, um, and that body lacks a quorum because of conflicts, the rule of necessity necessitates that they make that decision, so they are allowed to invoke that and, and actually be able to act on it. So I would recognize the council president. 
I, uh, I do have a conflict. I have insurance for the city for my family, and as such, that's the extent of my, uh, of my conflict. And I, and, I, and I don't know, I don't get to claim the, the invocation of the rule of necessity. I believe that's essentially decided. By, but you will be. But I, my plan is to debate. So you will and deliberate on this yeah, yeah. To, to participate in the in the vote, okay? Councilor Speck. I have the same conflict. I have health insurance through the city. My family does, and I invoke the rule as well. Okay. Councilor Schwartz. Likewise, similar conflict. I invoke the rule. Necessity. Okay. So that's through. Councilor Rattles. I have city health insurance for myself. I invoke the rule of necessity. Okay. And uh, I do as well. Okay. So. And you I invoke the rule. Says. Okay. So, um, those members <laughs> having more, having uh, one, one more. Yeah. Oh, so, excuse yeah, me, me too. Councilor. <laughs> oh. okay. So, do you want to go ahead and just state? I, yeah, I uh, utilize the city's health plan for an individual, okay. and uh, so I would un otherwise be unable to uh, vote on this matter. Okay. So you also. Okay. So, um, having having done that, uh, I now detect the presence of a quorum. We now have a quorum. Uh, and so we are able to proceed um, uh, with this, the next question, which is an order um, in City Council upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Markowitz ordered that the City of Northampton elects to engage in the process to change health insurance benefits under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 32B, Section 21-23. And I would ask for a motion to um, adopt that. For purposes of discussion, move, 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 move to approve. Move to approve. Second. second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Um, I have a presentation that I will just briefly go through with you. Um, just going through the um, going through why I'm bringing this forward to you, uh, and I will um, as soon as we call that up, um, we'll go through it. We provided information to you in the packet, um, including some information that provides sort of a timeline. Um, this is the Acts, uh, Chapter 69 of the Acts of 2011, that was adopted by the legislature last year, signed into law by uh, Governor Patrick. Um, we can go to the next slide. The the, the basic summary of what this the, what this uh, new law does, this new local option does, is that after it's accepted locally. Um, the, uh, the appropriate municipal public authority, in this case the executive in our city, uh, may follow a process that's prescribed by the law in order to make health insurance plan design changes or to transfer uh, the community into the state's group insurance commission. So you can go to the next slide. Um, so the two key parts are plan design and group insurance commission. So plan design essentially are those aspects of the various aspects of the plan that include co-pays, prescription drugs, um, deductibles, emergency room co-pays, hospitalization. So those, those would be the elements of plan design that we'd be discussing. And again, this does not have anything to do with the percentage that employees pay uh, for health insurance relative to the city or any of those things. It's just plan design issues. And then the second issue is the GIC, which is the, um, which is the state's group insurance commission. Um, since 2007, municipalities have had the ability, uh, were given the authority to move into the GIC plan. Uh, that initial process was somewhat, um, was somewhat difficult, and so they've now added this other option through 21-23. So the GIC basically is all the insurance that's offered to state employees, UMass, et cetera. Um, there's currently 35 cities and towns that are participating in the GIC, including in our area, Springfield, Pittsfield, Munson, and Orange. You can also see we have several uh, school districts in our region, as well as the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is in the GIC. Um, the GIC essentially, uh, the state negotiates with a set of insurance companies, offers a set of plans that employees can choose uh, to opt into, a Medicare plan uh, for retirees, um, it's all administered by the state. They set the rates. They negotiate the rates, et cetera. So that's the other piece that can be done uh, through this new, um, th this new law that we're asking you to accept. You can go to the next slide. So what's the process? Um, and I included a, a longer flow chart in your packet, but the first step is adopting the new law. 
essentially allowing us to engage in the process. So this is the first step that would be required before we could even entertain moving into the process. So it essentially um, a vote of the Board of Selectmen to the City Council. The next step that would happen is, if this were adopted for us to engage in the process, is we'd have to prepare a proposal. We'd have to seek bids. We'd have to look at are there ways that we could um, make plan design changes to find savings in our health insurance, or would it, or it, would it be advantageous for us, would we be able to find savings by moving into the GIC? Um, so essentially the next step would be we'd have a discussion with, with the IAC, which is our insurance advisory committee, um, which, uh, the, why don't you flip to the next slide actually, we'll just skip ahead to that. There's currently an insurance advisory committee that we work with, um, and and to echo the comments that were made in, in public comment, it's been a, a it's been a collaborative effort to work with employees through the insurance advisory committee to look at how can we um, how can we nego work on improving the city's health care plan or trying to find cost savings. Uh, that plan, that, that committee has a representative of each bargaining unit and plus one retiree. It only has a consultative role. It makes recommendations. Um, so if you want to just flip back to the next, to the previous slide, what, the, um, what this new process does is it retains the IAC. Um, so there's a, a discussion with the IAC, but then it also creates, uh, once a proposal is, is sent to the IAC, it then calls for the formation of a public employee committee. Um, you can, I'm sorry to be bouncing back, but <laughs> go to that next slide. So the public employee committee is a new uh, formation that, under the state law, which again has representatives of all the bargaining units. It's weighted, however, to the number of employees. So there's, uh, there's votes are weighted by the number of employees. And then there's a 10% of that weighted vote goes to retirees. And they're actually a decision-making body that negotiates over these plan design changes. So there's a 30-day negotiation period that happens uh, between uh, the city and this PEC. Um, and again, we have to provide information about the proposed, either the proposed plan design changes or the move to the GIC. Um, and, uh, and then the benchmark that's used throughout this is the GIC itself, are the GIC benchmark plans that we have to be able to show that we can put together a plan that's comparable to or better than that GIC plan as the benchmark. Um, uh, and so that, that, that all happens. Then there's a final step. If there's, if, if there's unable to reach an agreement during that 30-day process uh, between the, the PEC and the city, there's then this final, um, why don't we go to the next slide. Um, so, the, so we prepare a proposal. Um, we go ahead and we, we, we put forward the proposal. We talk about the savings that we can develop uh, we could realize in the next 12 months. And the other important piece of that is we also have to show how that savings, 25% of that savings could be shared with employees in the first year to mitigate any, any switch into a, new, into a new proposal. So you can go to the next slide. So again, we've notified the IAC, we're working, we're providing them information on it and going through the proposal. Then the next step, you can go to the next slide, is to move into this negotiation with the, um, with the uh, public employee committee. Um, you can see that we provide them a proposal. There's then a 30-day negotiation period. And the goal is to achieve a written agreement um, during that 30 days. And you can see it describes the vote process that's used to go ahead and reach the agreement. Um, you can go to the next slide. If there's not agreement um, in that 30 days, uh, then there's a there's a there's a, a next step which is an arbitration almost an arbitration step where a review panel is formed uh it's a three-member panel the PEC appoints one member the city appoints one member and the state appoints well the state provides a list of three neutral members which have to be agreed on mutually if we can't agree on then the state selects the third member the third neutral member is the chair mm -hmm. they then have the task of reviewing this negotiation and, and making a determination um, and there are some further benchmarks related to um, to what they have to use to make that deliberation and those meetings are subject to open meeting law so that's an open meeting discussion counselor who, who from the state uh, the Department of Administration and Finance 
Thank you. Uh, which oversees this, so administration and finance. And are these? The, I'm sorry. The the neutral people are they? Are they from the city? Are they're, they just from the state? Are names just, that are select three names that are selected by the state. So I do, they could be state officials. They could. I'm not okay. know who they would be, but they're guys at a bus stop. I don't know, but they provide three. I will say, and if you read through the materials that I provided, that in the year that the law has been in effect, there have been some 130 communities that have opted in. There's only been one that have gone to this third step. Uh, so short far. list then. What's that? A short list. I suppose it's a short list, but so it, it hasn't actually been invoked very often. This final step. Again, I think the goal is to provide a clear and sure and a time frame so that this so that this negotiation happens in a very controlled time frame, and then there's this other uh, process at the end to oversee it. Um, so you can go to the next slide. This is just a, um, this is actually a slide that I showed you when I was doing the budget presentations around the city, which shows the growth of our health insurance uh, costs over the last uh, 10 fiscal years. You can see where we were in FY 2003, spending about $6 million on our health insurance. You can see that that's been a number that's been really increasing over time. Uh, we, this, in fiscal year 2013, will be cresting 10 million for the first time in terms of our health insurance costs. Uh, again, $76 million uh, um, general fund budget. Uh, so we're 10 million of that is going towards health insurance. So doubled in 10 years. What's that? It's doubled in 10 years. It's been a it's been a it's been a growth. But I will say I think we've done a good job. Uh, and again, working with employees to try to look at ways that we could modify um, in, and and keep our costs down relative to the growth of health insurance generally. Um, you may recall last year we reached a point where we'd sort of run out of ways that we could um, change the plan that we had uh, before us. There were some other plans that we wanted to look at um, that were, again, similar to GIC type plans. But the time that we required under the current system to be able to have to try to negotiate individually with each particular union to try to reach those in the time that we needed to get that completed for open enrollment for the budget made it very difficult uh, to do. So that's one of the impetuses of this law is to create a more streamlined effort that allows you to look, have a benchmark, which is the state's approved health insurance plans, and use those as a benchmark that if cities and towns can provide the same level that the state benchmark is using, then we're allowed to move into that. Um, go to the next slide, because what we've done now is we've put the GIC up against um, Northampton. So Northampton is still in red, and the GIC per percentage of change, you can sort of track how that's gone over the last um, several years. And, the, and on the left is percentage increases or decreases. You can see we've tracked them fairly well, but then as you get closer here to FY 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, you can see that our costs have been going up. The GIC have been able to contain their costs. This last uh, year, uh, their increase was only 1.7%. Ours was in the neighborhood of 7 or 8%. So, so that's, the, that's sort of the challenge. If you, I think there's one more slide. Uh, one more slide. This is the Mass Taxpayers Foundation has set up this computer generation uh, sequence, which you can go in, you can put in your town, and they actually do a 10-year look at the GIC versus your particular town, and they're using DOR expenditure numbers. And so you put in our town, and it says, it's, it's a little bit inaccurate, because it says over 10 years, we could have saved $3.6 million. It's inaccurate because we were only allowed to go into the GIC since 2007, but they're still looking at a span. And they're saying that it would be an average annual savings of 363196 So, So that's just looking at how the state, and again, they, we're, we have 900 employees. Um, we're negotiating with health insurance companies. Um, they're, they have millions of employees, and they're using that negotiating power on behalf of the entire state to, to negotiate for, for rates. So, so that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difference in terms of the scale that they're working on. So the vote that I'm at asking you to take is not to go into the GIC, it's not to make plan design changes, it's not to commit to any of those things, but it allows the city to engage in this new process. Um, it allows us to have that option to be able to uh, work with our employees under this new framework 
Um, and again, if, we've, if we're able to determine that the GIC, for example, is a good option, it gives us a way to do that expeditiously. And we're able to actually, again, we have to prove that there's an analysis that we can prove that the savings are there. And then it gives us a, a path to be able to do that. So that's what this particular uh, law is about. And December 1st is that. And, and so, for example, and this has been one of the issues, this year we have to notify the state by December 1st if we intend to move into the GIC. Um, and that's been one of the issues in the past is, uh, I think it used to be October 1st. Mm -hmm. You used to have to notify them by October 1st. Um, we would, be, you know, th which would require you to do a lot of bargaining around that issue in the summertime leading up to that event. And it made it very difficult to actually get through that process and be able to do it by October 1st. The other hurdle I'll mention about the GIC is they, um, they don't actually announce what their rates are going to be till the spring. So we, we ha we're, we're going to try to do some analysis. We have a health care consultant that does some analysis with us. We're going to try to look at what would, what would happen if we took our current plan and employees and moved into the GIC or moved into some other plans, do an analysis to try to come up with a plan that we can then present to the IAC to say these are the options. So we're not committing to anything, but we, this gives us the ability to, to make a change using this new process if we want to. Counselor. I, I'm assuming you're finished. I'm finished. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> this has been a long, uh, we know that this process came before the state a year ago, highly contentious. Um, uh, generally speaking, the broader labor movement was severely opposed to what seemed like a comparison with Wisconsin politics in terms of taking health care out of collective bargaining. Um, it was a long and le long legislative process that did result in the end in uh, July of a compromise settlement and one that um, uh, actually, the Paul Toner, the president of the Mass Teachers Association, called, um, he said, in the end, neither the unions nor the municipalities got everything they wanted. That's what genuine negotiations look like. And I do understand that at that level, um, they were able to come to some compromise. However, at a local level, here where the rubber meets the road, I am, I am very concerned with um, the fact that though we have sent out notifications to the numerous bargaining units, we haven't heard anything back. I, I'm not saying that that's anyone's fault and it could be a mail glitch or it could be something that happens there, but it's clearly something that really, I think, needs to be discussed. I think there needs to be um, over the table conversations well in advance of my feeling comfortable uh, taking taking an uh, approval of this because just because we can, the state legislation says we can, I'm not convinced that we should at this point. We have heard as uh, the president of the Northampton Education Association, school employees has, has uh, voiced, we've seen employees really um, <coughs> come to the table and uh, put everything out there and taken those, taken those hits really at a time when the city really need them. We've seen other bargaining units that refuse to. And I understand why that, you know, presents a real problem for the city. Um, but I'm, I'm at this point a, a bit uncomfortable taking this position until there have been, or uh, what seem to be at least conversations about what that would entail. I think that there's a lot of, there could be a lot of uh, real fright. I mean, frankly, what this says is that we have had, we saw the graph that showed that there are soaring high costs. That's the problem. It's not that the city has been extremely generous in giving out health insurance to city employees. In fact, we've come more and more to represent more of even the private sector even though most of us know that people go into the public sector in many ways because they take lower cuts, they take a cut in pay and they end up s sometimes with better retirement and better health insurance and they make that trade off. So at this point, I, I think short of having some more in-depth conversations for, through your office, hopefully, whether it's um, 
rather than waiting for a response back, maybe doing some more proactive outreach to the various bargaining units and sitting down and getting an understanding of what their concerns are about this. I would um, actually oppose at this moment and before a second reading and hope to hear back in the meantime that there have been some um, some negotiations. Could I, could I just address one, could I answer one question? Please. We had, and that was just the uh, issue of notification because the law does require prior, and you probably saw it on your MMA sheet, the law does require that you, we notify all the bargaining units and we have to give them two days notice and we have to do it by certified mail. Um, and so we actually sent out certified letters. We have all the certified slips that we did that last week. Uh, we wanted to give more than two days. We wanted to make sure that there was enough time. Um, and we did that last week, and we also sent it regular mail just as well um, in case people didn't like get the, go to the post office to get the letter. They'd at least get it directly. So we had two different ways to notify. Um, and I, you know, I, I signaled that I'd be doing this in my budget message, but I wanted to wait till after the summer when all of our employees were back. So your point is well taken, and I'm definitely willing to try to reach out and talk to them between now and, and the second reading on this to try to get feedback, because um, we have not received much feedback on it. Um, and I'm hoping the article in the newspaper, as well as tonight's debate, will give us some feedback on it. Um, but again, it, your point is well taken. Thank you. Uh, so I think I had Councillor Schwartz and then Councillor Labarge. I just want to underscore my comprehension that we're talking about voting on a, engaging in a process. And that, that we're not adopting what the GIC will look like as applied in Northampton, per se. We're starting a conversation. Have I got that right? Well, it allows the city to 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 work within this process that that's been set up under this new law that was set up in 2011. So it allows us to do that to to negotiate in the parameters that are set up by that law. We still have you're you're allowed to still negotiate the old way, the new way. Uh, it doesn't commit us to moving to the GIC. It doesn't commit right. to okay. We still have to actually go through the process uh, and all those through th several steps that we would have to go through. Point of information, uh, th this, though, as I understand, is the only point that the council has to bite at the, at that apple. You're correct, because the council does not negotiate right. uh, so the, the only bargaining thing bargaining or health insurance. The, the, so you this have, vote is our only yeah. bite of the apple where we get to weigh in whether to grant the authorization. You're correct. Yes. Yes. So right. Councilor Schwartz still has So I, I just, uh, based on the presentation and, um, and our, our fiscal situation and, the, and, the, and what the overwhelming need to address this health care crisis in our community as a microcosm of our entire nation, I support this effort and this process, and, I, and I, um, I'm happy with my bite at the apple to say, go forth and let's try to figure this out. Okay, so I had count sort of a bar. Just a follow-up follow clarification, because I'm not sure. Even though it does not obligate us to, and through the chair to the counselor, doesn't obligate us to go move into the GIC, what this will do is allow us unilaterally to require um, entry into the GIC, which is, I think, the concern the bargaining units may have. I understand. Okay, thank you. Councilor? I have some concerns just hearing um, from the president of the Teachers Association and their bargaining unit, her not even receiving anything even a registered mail or any type of mailing that was sent by the city and having such a short notice, I have a problem with that. And we heard it from her tonight that she got it just, what, a couple of days ago, today. So something's not right, Mayor, if you're not hearing either from other bargaining units. Well, uh, again, as I said, the. We, we were required to send out the notice by certified mail, return receipt, and that's what we did. We obviously can't compel people to actually receive it or, or when they get it, we can't, you know, we, we did it well before that to allow time for them to, to so that's what we tried to comply with the law. Um, so I can't really, we can try to investigate what might have happened in that particular instance, but we complied with the letter of the law, and we did it more than the two days. We, we actually sent it out last week, not this week. Um, so, so what we're doing right now is that we're allowing, we're going to go ahead and vote to allow 
to engage in the process. Yeah. That's it. It's opening up that window. And then that process, if passed, would allow the mayor to go ahead and go into negotiations with all the bargaining units, correct? Uh, through this new, st we, new we currently do negotiate with all the bargaining units under one chapter 150, which right. is collective bargaining. This creates a different pathway uh, specifically for health insurance and specifically for plan design and GIC. And it creates a new process that I've described with the formation of this new committee, the 30-day period, the review panel, et cetera. Um, and in terms of the GIC piece, um, there is a requirement when if, if it goes to the final panel, there's, we have to be able to show that beyond a 5% savings on plan design change, we can achieve an extra 5% on GIC by moving into the GIC. So basically, when we get to that final, if, there's a, if we aren't able to reach an agreement with the PEC, if we go to the next phase, uh, we, have to, we, de we have to be able to demonstrate 10% savings to the city, which would be um, you know, $10 million, uh, you do the math, so it would be significant. So, but again, it still keeps that conversation between employees. It just frames it in a different way, and it, and it creates a more streamlined process for the city. And, and uh, you know, it does give us more control over plan design change, but we have to be able to show that we can save uh, money, and we also have to be able to present a plan that mitigates the impact on employees. And those are some of the concessions that you described in the, in the compromises that were reached about the legislation. So, Councilor uh, Tacey. Yeah, um, I guess every day is a learning curve. I had uh, absolutely no idea that this, almost this entire council had uh, health insurance for the city. And I think um, that the city is pretty generous and maybe overly generous. I know that when I have part-time employees, I don't offer them any, any health insurance. Uh, I just find it. I, I just find it astounding, and uh, I do not partake in the city's health uh, insurance. And um, I just uh, wanted to throw that out there. I just uh, there are some ways we can cut health insurance costs. It's just my opinion. Thank you. Okay, Councilor. Yes, Mayor. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something about. It's a health analysis, a, a health person to come in and analyze so what, structure. So what, explain. I would like to know who that would be. So what we we currently um, we currently use a firm that helps us when we do our health insurance uh, shopping, for lack of a better term. We go out to try to figure out what are the health insurance plans. So we use a, uh, a vendor that that they what they do is they take a look at our. Um, at our current plan, they take a look at our, um, uh, you know, our, our our history over the over the previous 12 months, and they go out and seek quotes from other vendors. That's been the process that we've used, and we work with the IAC. We sometimes will bring those vendors to the IAC, and they'll present different plans, etc. So, um, so. Again, what we would do is we would do that same thing. We'd be looking at are there plan design changes we could make that would yield savings, and we'd also have them do an analysis of the GIC. If we were moving to the GIC, knowing what we know about our, our employees and what the GIC costs are, what would be the potential savings? We've already had them do some analysis of that. Um, it's a little, the range is, the potential range is, anywhere from like four to 10%. But there's a lot of variables because there's multiple plans. You don't know, you have to kind of guess how many employees will go into what plan. Um, for example, we have Health New England right now. They have Health New England in the GIC, exactly. which is a, so we may they find- They have Blue Cross, I think. I don't, Blue Cross is not in the GIC. They're one of the hold that, they're not in the GIC right now. They're, they're a separate plan, but there's Tufts, there's, there's you know, several Health of the New big England name insurance companies. So, so we'd have, we would do that analysis, and again, we have to present that analysis as part of the process, and we have to show the, 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 the background for that analysis for the potential cost savings. So it's Fallon, Harvard, Health New England, Neighborhood Health Plan, and Tufts, and Unicare are the, are the plans they have. So, Councilor. Just for you, the uh, <coughs> average fa family health plan is $15,450 a year. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Just want to throw it out. Yeah, definitely. And I don't know how much we pay per family, what the city 
ends up paying. I don't, haven't, haven't got a clue. It's about twelve to thirteen thousand. Yeah, eighty. We pay eighty percent. So, so you pay eighty percent of that fifteen thousand dollars. That's correct. Councilor, well, I, I think this is a good point. It's something we should bring up. It's something that's been discussed at, <clears throat> at other times, and one would be the fact that for health insurance, our health insurance is, if people know, we get five thousand dollars a year at salary, well, and many of us get twelve thousand for our family health insurance. So it is a. I think job. it is. A, it is paying well. Seventeen thousand. Um, I'm not sure it's paying well enough, but I do think it's unfair that some counselors don't get that benefit. And I'm not sure that benefit is out of whack. So it's something we could look at for both the council and for the school committee to say maybe we need to increase the salary but not have the health insurance piece. But I think that's a, a, a lengthy discussion on whether we should do that. Councilor, uh, Council President. I, I, I mean, clearly the gist of the concern, and I think that uh, President Carlson suggested and, and, and or presented in that, and that Councilor Carney is representing is the the concern about the camel's nose under the tent, uh, and I think this is also done in the environment that we are all aware of the the diminishing of public sector union strength and and essentially. Uh, but the thing is, I don't. Th I, I'm concerned that 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 be extended to us as being considered you know, like a Wisconsin throwover of of union systems. I mean, I actually, I on the other hand believe that the insurance. Is more than appropriate. I mean, I think because the salaries are predicated on uh, the salaries for public sector workers, as Councilor Carney pointed out, predicated on the insurance benefits. The salaries are not commensurate with the jobs offered. That 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 perk is what makes the offset. And I think that obviously that would be that would come at some enormous concern for bargaining units. And I and and to some extent, this is this is changing the aspect of. Uh, one aspect of collective bargaining, um, because it does. I mean, one of the things that's the hamstrung mayor, this mayor and mayors previous, is that the time frame in which we have to have a commitment and uh, to a health insurance policy does not necessarily lend itself. There are other forces that certainly don't lend itself to the long slog, an appropriate slog, uh, involved in all collective bargaining systems. So I mean, it's and clearly the the numbers are reflected on the screen. Ten million dollars out of seventy-six million dollars, a significant portion of the budget. But, I mean, so that, I, I'm framing the context and I, and and framing the dilemma that is presented to us. I mean, actually, we could have got copped an easy way out of this because we said we have a conflict. But I have a conflict. I can't. Believe this. But I think it's I think it's important that we own this vote when we come to it. And uh, and the fact is, this is our one bite of the apple. This is the one point that we get to debate and deliberate. This, this is the one point that actually we have the decision and the responsibility. Of that decision is on us. So, uh, on one hand, I actually subscribe to proceeding with caution and, and certainly information. I I have been reading up on this rather extensively, but I I don't know if all the counselors are quite up to. Certainly, I'm not up to Councilor Carney's speed by any stretch of the imagination. This is what she lives and breathes. But uh, and and the same with the mayor. But um, I, you are, are you? I got the sense that you're expressing this because there, as you point out, there is kind of a a deadline at least that you've established for yourself in this in this process. Mm -hmm. Um, December. In terms of why I brought it forward, right, now. brought it forward now, and then I do want to look. I do want to look at the GIC. I do, right. I do want to seriously look at it, and so I want to be able to backing up from that December first deadline. If I if we wanted to notify the GIC, then we have to notify them by December first. So, and again, can't can't even get to that point without this framework. So right. Essentially, essentially we have a box that we're giving you permission to look inside that box. Yeah. Right. And, and that's. And and uh, and if after we vote no, then you can't explore this. Uh, you know, we can try to explore the GIC through the older system that very few communities took right. advantage of because it was so cumbersome. I mean, that they they created a process for people to move into the GIC, and then they were wondering why nobody was doing it because it was just a, it was a well, really I, difficult process. This is so this has been an ongoing discussion in the MMA yeah. for 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 quite a while. 
and the, and, and the fact is that the aggregate pools, of course, and the power, as you no noted, that the state enjoyed, as it were, for state administrators were able to say, we have a huge amount of uh, customers here. We get, to, we get to dictate our terms a little better. And, and the municipalities were always resentful of the fact that they didn't have an opportunity to buy in that. Yet there was a mandated insurance requirement, which, by the way, state mandate, Romney Care. I don't know if you heard about it, but it was it's in all the papers. And the, and the, so the, so you're con you, you want the opportunity to in proceed and investigate and look into this box, but at this point, once we give you that authorization, the author uh, all other decisions are yours. That is correct. Right. As, they, as they are now with exactly. respect to collective yeah. bargaining right. about health insurance and... and um, right. I mean, th this is unique. I mean, frequently these question, this question wouldn't even come before a council to uh, an elected body to vote on. Uh, this well, this is a local. This is a new local option law yeah. that requires local adoption before you can engage in it. So, okay. uh, thank I, you. I, I was just interested. I think that was one of the other parts of the legislation that was a compromise that, to allow it to be a community by community decision. So, mm -hmm. Councilor Tacy. So, if we have seven on the council that invoke the rule of necessity, and six, it's a, six, 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 six. Yes, that's and correct. Then, that's all that's required. Uh, that's a super majority. So if I were to bring a motion for to save some money, because it's all about saving money, if I were to bring a motion forward that we change the code that the city council is not offered a health insurance policy, how far would that go? In terms of uh, as far as the vote. That's why I'm, I'm kind of curious. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I think I think you're, you need to stay on the motion that we're debating right well, yeah. now. But it's all about the same thing. We're talking about saving money. You're talking about different plans and this and that. Uh, we've gone up. We've doubled our health insurance costs in in ten years. You could certainly. I think it's all part. I think it's all part of the conversation. Yeah, and I think that would be. We could check into the whether that. I, I would assume that a vote on that would require the same. A hundred thousand dollars. Similar would require the similar. Uh, issue around the conflict of interest we'd have to we could check with the exactly that's what i mean yeah yeah um but that would have to be i assume you'd want to do that noticed and do it separately as a separate ordinance etc it's not really i'll be in to talk to you exactly and point of information this was actually uh, debated and discussed in the course of the charter um the charter rules and uh the committee i think um, decided not to proceed forward with that at this point, but to, in fact, actually allow it to be uh, discussed and debated as we, we set up our own rules and conditions and terms. So, but, but I would also argue that um, it would also take into consideration discussion of stipends. It also, took into, it also takes into consideration how you limit and restrict um, the ability for people to run and serve in office for the same reason they can teach same thing. So all those considerations come up in that debate, and actually, we're off topic at this point in in, in that respect because it's, that's not necessarily germane to this issue. And, and arguably, we'd be out voting our own best interest to authorize as opposed to oppose. So it's interesting. Our conflict actually represents the opposite of what people might project on this. I mean, and maybe that's your point. I don't know. Councilor Freeman Daniel, Councilor Carney. Okay, um, I would actually entertain or make a motion that we continue this until such point as we've been able to not only do outreach to the number of bargaining units, but ask, specifically ask for their input and response out of respect for the fact that we've sat at the table with them on numerous occasions and worked out and taken trade-offs regarding health insurance and wages and many other things out of the, you know, respect and loyalty for our, uh, workers of the city of Northampton. So is that a motion? Sure. So is, is the motion to... To continue until home. such time as the mayor's office has been able to do outreach and receive response from the various... Is so there a date certain? I think you need to postpone it to another, to yeah. a date of some kind in order for that to happen. The next meeting? You can certainly postpone it to that. So there's a motion on the floor to postpone until the next consideration until the next meeting. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion or questions about that particular motion? Council. 
Well, I get to say this twice in one evening. This is the reason we have a second reading. Um, I think we could vote on it in the first reading. And partially, uh, I would say that I think the second reading, and again, we can always postpone to a date certain or a date indefinite on the next reading. I think there's something about taking a first reading that raises the level of the conversation. It, it's in the newspaper. It moves it along. It moves the process along because there's <laughs> nothing like a vote to get people to say, what did you vote on last night? I can't believe you voted for that. I think it, so I think it's an important thing. I think that's the reason we have the first and the second reading because it actually gives us time where it's not just, it's, it's not a, it, it, it gets much more public input. I certainly get much more calls after I've taken a vote on something. People say, I didn't even know you were voting on that. So that's been my experience with it, and I would be happy the next time to, to entertain, you know, postponing it to another date certain on the second reading. But I once again say, let's use that, which is instituted in our process. Um, I'll withdraw. Huh. So the amendment's been withdrawn. Choice. Back to the main motion. Councilor Tacey. I just intend to abstain. I just don't. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, I um. You know, I, I'm, uh, I'm not going to echo, I'm not going to repeat everything that was previously said. I, I just think, uh, you know, if I were, if I were a, a, a union president or in a union, I would not feel uh, very comfortable with this. I wouldn't be in favor of it um, simply because it is taking away from some of my ability to bargain. Um, but as a counselor, I have to also see, look at the health insurance that uh, expenses, which have been a budget buster. Um, and... Uh, I, so I, I intend to to uh, to vote to adopt because of um, some of the compromise that the state uh, has already put in, into place. I, I think that's a it was uh, it was favorable to uh, to both the the idea about controlling costs and also to share some of that, those cost uh, containment mechanisms with the uh, very employees who are affected. So um, you know this is one one time where. Um, you know, you, you, ha you have to embrace a compromise that maybe you didn't even work out. But uh, if, it, if it can be partially to your benefit, partially to the city's benefit, and partially to the employee's benefit, uh, then I, I'm, I'm, I'm intending on voting to adopt it. Any other uh, comments or discussion on this on first reading? Okay. Roll call. So there's been a request for a roll call. So this is on first reading. All those in favor, please state aye, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Carney? No. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Tacey? I'm staying. Councilor Adams? Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so by a vote of seven yes, one no, and one abstention, it is adopted on first reading. Um, I take uh, Councillor Carney's uh, advice very seriously, and we'll follow up on that. Um, and uh, and we'll, when this comes back to us on second reading, we can report back on some of that. Okay, so that uh, that is on first reading. So the next item.